It's just an honor to be here tonight. Kind of run short on words sometime. But uh, I've enjoyed this meeting, enjoyed the good preaching, and uh, it's just been so rich and, uh, and so good. Thank God for his mercy and grace and goodness to us. I have enjoyed the singing and the worship and the praise uh, tonight, uh, today and last night. And uh, hallelujah, I want to die like that song said, die. Hallelujah. I, I left my body one time in a hospital, and uh, my wife was standing by my bedside, and I had a massive heart attack. My eyes was left wide open, but I knew I was gone. I knew. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I knew I was in a fix. And I prayed and I said, God, please. Uh, at that time, my boys were very small. And uh, I said, God, please don't take me away from my boys and my wife and our church. And uh, in a little bit, I was back in my body again. I do know one thing. There's life after death. And uh, it was like I was just transported out of my body. It was like a ripping, tearing that I come out of my body. And, and nobody had to tell me. I knew. Uh, I didn't see any heavenly lights. I didn't see any burning fires. Thank God. But... Uh, Anyway, the Lord was merciful to me, <clears throat> and uh, that's, that's been now uh, 12 years, 12 years. God's been good to me, and I thank him for that. Thank him for that. I have uh, my, my one desire tonight is to obey the Lord, and uh, uh, I want to obey God. Uh, I've become a little uh, anxious I thought, you know, if I'm not on target tonight, this may be the last time I preach uh, in a convention like this, which uh, I don't go around wanting to preach in a convention for sure with all the pressure and all that. But uh, anyway, uh, I won't obey the Lord. I've enjoyed what I feel here tonight. I've enjoyed the preaching last night. It was phenomenal. It was so, so good, so rich. And I believe it. I believe it. It's a relationship with God that is going to make us, going to help us make the trip. And then today with Brother uh, Jeff Dykes and uh, such a good message and practical to us and our needs. And I don't want to be better. Do you want to? I don't want to die better. I don't want life circumstances to cause me to be better. And I don't feel better. I just don't feel better. Everything hadn't come right side up to me, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the winning side. And I thank the Lord for that. But I want to be sure that I stay on the winning side. I want to be sure that I stay on the winning side. And uh, I know what it is to be on the right side of things, and I know what it is uh, to be on the wrong side of things. <clears throat> I also know that there's a God that uh, specializes in saving people. There's a lot of ups and downs in life, but uh, God sees the heart. Not justifying sin tonight, but God sees the heart. And God knows what we need. He knows how to run interference in our life. And uh, when everything's against us, he knows how to put us uh, in the right place and, and be an overcomer. But anyway, I, I thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy and uh, what he has meant in my life. These words that Brother Parker has said tonight, uh, it just, uh, anyway, 
I wish I was that good. But uh, God has been good to me, and I thank Him for that. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I still have a real fear and reverence for hell. When I evangelized, I was known as a hellfire preacher. I'm still a hellfire preacher. And uh, I don't preach it all the time. I don't preach it near as much as I used to preach it. But just about every month, I give our church a good shaking. <clears throat> because in, in, in everything else, and feeling good and wonderful and shouting and praising God and magnifying God, uh, we sure need to be careful. We sure need to be careful and live for Him and serve Him and uh, be ready whenever He calls us home. I don't want to almost make it. I want to make it. I don't want to live a careless life. I want to stay on top of things. And uh, Anyway, you know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that used to be real, real, real useful to people that they're not using it anymore. You know, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, the Trinitarian Pentecostals, you know, they used to dress like we dress and just had a lot of common things uh, with us. But uh, several years ago now, they, they voted uh, that they did not want to be known as a holiness church any longer. That used to be the first term when the Holy Ghost fell in the early 1900s. And uh, they didn't call them Pentecostals. They called them holy holiness or uh, holy rollers. And so all of a sudden, there was a group of people that, uh, that made up in their mind. In fact, the largest uh, Trinitarian Pentecostal uh, group in the world voted that they did not want to be known as holiness people. They did not want to be called a holiness church. And, uh, you know, that's kind of alarming when you realize that, uh, you know, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And I, I sure want to see him. Hallelujah. And I, the, I think it's been quoted here maybe last night, you know, holy, holy, holy unto the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah, uh, uh, is it 59? What is it? Six. Six. I'm way off. That's right. Six and verse one through about four. Through four. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord God Almighty. What that means is that God is really emphasizing on holiness. And, um, uh, uh, a lot of uh, men that study the, the word of the Lord believes that, that holiness is, is uh, the, the main characteristic of God Almighty. Even above love and other things, he is first and form, foremost holy, holy, holy. And in the Hebrew language, to emphasize something, instead of using a lot of uh, adjectives and adverbs, and, and uh, they, they use repetition. Nowhere in the Bible does it mention any characteristic of God that they repeat three times, but they do that with holiness. And so I feel like we need to still be a holy church, don't you? We need to be a holy church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, uh, and we see other things that seem to be still in the book, but we don't, uh, we don't look at them as close enough. You know, one thing that I, I want to be conscious of constantly is uh, a belief that Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Just uh, a few months ago, actually about two years ago, the Lord impressed on me to begin to preach more about two things. And one of these things was uh, the second coming of the Lord. Second coming of the Lord. And uh, how much is written about the second return of the Lord? Much more written about the second return of the Lord than the first coming uh, to the world. And then uh, the last thing that I want to mention that I felt God commissioned me to do more of, and that was uh, to preach on the subject of hell. Uh, we have had a decrease in, in preachers and saints that, that uh, preachers speak very much about hell any longer. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that I've run into preachers that said, I have never preached a sermon on hell. Even though that uh, Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. 
He preached more about hell than all the prophets and the apostles put together. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. And he left men like Paul to write about what heaven was all about. But he did not entrust the subject of hell in the hands of men. He wanted to let us know himself that there is a place called hell. I don't want to go there. I'm not going to spend all my time worried about going to hell. I don't believe that's the will of the Lord. I thank God for the strength and the power that we get when we worship God and we praise God and we sing about heaven. But at the same time in all of that, I want us to realize that there's a hell. And there's not anybody in this building that is in a position... That you're so close to God that you don't have to worry anymore and take into consideration that there is a hell. I'm going to tell you something else we need to know. Hell is enlarging itself. We can highlight on all the glittering things that we enjoy and forget about hell. But I want to let you know that out of four types of ground, there's only one that's good. And I want you to know there were ten virgins and five of them were foolish. They were clean. They had the markings of the church on them. They were virgins. But they were lost. They ended up being lost. I read uh, Matthew chapter 7 today that that led up to Brother Mark Copeland's message about uh, relationships. It starts off talking about wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction. And many there be. Everybody say many. Many there be which go in there at. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And few. Everybody say few. Few there be that find it. We're the few. I want to remain the few. I'm not saying I don't want a lot of people, but I I want to tell you, I I want to remain in the few is what I meant to say. And we need to all uh, remember that. He goes on to say that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to call on his name and they're going to feel like everything's all right and they're going to expect to be saved and they're going to be lost. It's, it's shaking enough to realize in those passages of Scripture, first of all, uh, there's people that's going to go to hell. There's people that's going to go to hell. Just if one person would go to hell, it would be unbelievable to imagine the horribleness of one human being that is made in God's image and in God's likeness going to hell. Hell is forever. But he goes on to say, it's not just that, but few there be that enter into everlasting life. But many that there go in that wide gate. Many. And then some of them, they're going to say, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. You know, with an atmosphere like this that has been so glorious before I got up. So glorious. It's easy to just slip in here and get the splash overs and feel good about things. That's right. Where would we be? What what would the casualty rate be? What would the casualty rate be tonight if this would be the night that Jesus would come? Now, this is, this is my assignment tonight. My assignment tonight is preach about hell. And I want to do everything but do that tonight. I want to try to slip out tonight while all this glory was flowing. But I want to read from Mark chapter or Luke chapter 16. 
and verse 19. I guess this is on Holy Ghost Rally, Holy Ghost uh, Radio. Hallelujah. I want to tell everybody that's listening to it that hell still exists. We don't want to go there. We don't have to go there. God has prepared for us a place. Hallelujah. There is a, there is a place that he's prepared for us. It's not his will that anybody go to hell. The worst person that's ever lived. He said, it's not my will that any perish. Any perish. Hallelujah. But all men come to repentance. His vision is to save the whole world. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. He invites everybody and whosoever will let him come. That's right. That's his vision. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting love. I will say this. If you go to hell. You will have to be a fool to go there. Only fools go to hell. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. Now is he comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all of this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. Kind of late to be trying to start a crusade, ain't it? I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Apostolic Holy Ghost preaching. Is your best route to get out of this world when the world's on fire. And Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and Lazarus evil things. And now he is comforted and thou art tormented. What would it be like? What is it like for an apostolic? To fool around and not really intentionally, but just carelessly. What does it feel like for an apostolic that knows so much to go to hell? Maybe this is just a little checkup for all of us. From the pulpit to the back door. God, if there's anything in my life that calls me. To miss that glorious place called heaven. I pray God that you'd help me. I don't want to hear Father Abraham say, Son, remember. Son, 
remember. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the promises that we have of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you care about us. You're concerned about us. You care about our children, God, that could be lost. You care about our spouses, oh God. I know, God, that your desire is to save everybody, to save the whole world. You made us in your image and in your likeness. And I know that you care about us. Oh God, I want to go to heaven. I want my children to go to heaven with me. Oh, I want our churches to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Help our preachers to remember to preach about hell. To remind us about a burning pit. A bottomless pit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, I rebuke this conspiracy of silence. Where people never mention it. They never mention it. They never mention it. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Heaven is going to help me tonight. Heaven is going to let the Holy Ghost flow through all of this tonight. Oh, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe you tonight, God. I believe you tonight, God. I believe you tonight, Lord. God bless you and you can be seated tonight. As I stand behind this pulpit this night, I feel so blessed of the Lord. There's so many things that I could be thankful for and I am thankful for. Uh, God has been good to me. I thank God for my upraising. I thank God that my mom and my dad were Christians. And they lived for God. They were Christians first. Above everything else. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my brothers and sisters. That was in our immediate family. All of them tonight have got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that they will be ready for the coming of the Lord. Thank God for all the friends. Thank God for Pentecostal friends. Over the years to realize that God has been good to us. To have other people around us that encourage us. To live right and do right. Hallelujah. And be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so many blessings that God gives us in life. And I thank the Lord for that. I suppose that one of the greatest blessings in life that that I could ever desire and and want. Outside of of having the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is for God to touch my mind and help me uh, to have a sound mind. Hallelujah. I've got a mother right now that has got uh, dementia and uh, and uh, she's having problems knowing where she's at. She still knows our name and and uh, every time I go and see her, just with her a couple of weeks ago and spent uh, the better part of the week with her. Hallelujah. Start off prompting her with scriptures and she would uh, uh, finish these, uh, I mean, scripture after scripture after scripture. Something deep inside of her that has not been removed because of a problem with, with memory. But I'm glad today that uh, God has blessed me with a sound mind. And I appreciate that so much. And I, I hope to God it remains like that uh, as, as long as I'm alive. Uh, most of us don't know what it is to be behind the whitewashed walls of a, of a mental hospital. Hallelujah. We don't know what it is to uh, uh, be put away somewhere because we don't function right in life. I'm looking at people here today that you're able to work and you're able to live and you're able to enjoy uh, recreation and life. And, and there's so many beautiful things about life that I, I appreciate so much. God has created a, a beautiful world for us. This rich man that I read in your hearing tonight was a possessor of a sound mind. Uh, he knew the riches of life as far as money was concerned and power and prestige and influence. He was a man that as far as what life had to offer outside of God, he, he had the money and he had no doubt the time and uh, to do about what he wanted to do. I would suspect that he was a very successful businessman and uh, he made a lot of money. And the Bible says that he lived sumptuously every day. I mean, it seemed like the blessings of our ordinary life was, was around him. And, and he could just get about anything that he wanted in life. 
There was one thing that offended him, and it was a beggar that sat at his gate and cried for the crumbs that fell from his tables, just just a little food to eat. And uh, day by day, the haggard form of poverty would stand, would stare into the face of wealth. Hallelujah. The eyes of a rich man would stare into the sunken eyes of a poor man that was slowly starving to death. Hallelujah. Days turned into weeks and weeks to months and months to years. Hallelujah. And, uh, time passed and, uh, and, uh, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, one of them passes away. I want to tell you, death is something that is an experience that all of us is going to face. Hallelujah. Unless we are taken out of here when the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. Death is something that crowns or crushes the hope of every man and every woman, every boy and every girl. Hallelujah. It's all in the way that you live. It's all in your value system and what you, what you, uh, think is, is good and, 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 and what you think is, is, is not good. Hallelujah. But, uh, death came. It came to the beggar. And uh, when death came to this poor, hopeless man, it seemed as, as far as natural things was concerned. Hallelujah. It was the crowning of his hopes when this man, without much that life had to offer, he went out into eternity to meet his God. It meant bidding goodbye to the sores that dogs had licked, to the joys that angels share. It meant bidding goodbye to uh, the cold, hard pavement, maybe, that he slept on at night, to the warmth and the goodness of Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah to the beggar. Death was a messenger of relief. He had been living for God. I don't know when he found God and they made everything right with God, but, but he was right with God when he died. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that the death of the beggar came. Hallelujah. And it should have been a sign to the rich man that just like the beggar died, he was going to die. Hallelujah. It looks like when we look around and we see life so quickly passing us and we see those that we have loved so much one day and the next day they're gone and you get my age and you get to looking around and, and there's so many people that have already missing. Hallelujah. And you realize the importance of being ready when death comes and, and knocks on your door. But the death came to the beggar and it should have been a sign to the rich man that he would not live forever. There would be a time that his riches would not bring him the joy and the satisfaction that he had received. In, in the past. Hallelujah. And so the man continued to live void of God. He was a godless man. I don't know how good or how bad he was, but, but he was void of what God would have had him to do in his lifetime. Hallelujah. Maybe it was one party after the next party and one good time after the next good time. As he lived as if there was no eternity and there was no reckoning day and, and that he'll never have to stand before the judgment bar of God and and give an account. Hallelujah. He died. And all of a sudden. Uh, everything that had been so great and wonderful. Was gone from his life. Hallelujah. The fine linen that he had wore. Hallelujah. Began to hang limp. And the eyes began to grow dim. And the hair that has been as black as a raven's wing. Was a silvery white. And, uh, and sickness had come. And death had come. The hands that had been so full of life's gains. Was empty. And, uh, and the face that had so much wore the smile. Of, of sin and immorality was last distorted with expressions of terrible pain. And hallelujah. His lungs that had been full of gaiety and laughter was last filled with hellish screams of demons and devils and a place called hell. But I want to tell you, this is the death of the lost. Hallelujah. This is the death of those that choose not to live for God with all of their heart. Hallelujah. When a man dies without God, hell comes to claim its own. Hell comes to claim what belongs to it. Hallelujah, friend. When it comes like that, you can weep, you can cry, you can scream, you can pray. But after Calvary has passed and it's over with, nothing can be done. 
You see people step through revival meetings and altar calls and sermons and, and they sit there and they hear the preacher preach and, and, but they just keep on living the way they're living. Hallelujah. It seems like that uh, nothing can stop them and nothing can turn them around. But, uh, but now there's no blood for them to be saved. There's no forgiveness. Hallelujah. As the long tentacles of hell reach out to grab hold their soul. A person that dies without God, the angels don't know you. God doesn't know you. The church doesn't know you. But you're eternally lost forever and ever and ever. The rich man died and the demons carried his soul into eternity. Into a place that burned with fire. Oh yes he did. There was no purple robe or fine linen but only a garment of fire. Hallelujah. The Bible says that this man in hell lifted up his eyes being in torments. And began to cry out. Hallelujah. Father Abraham have mercy on me. Hallelujah. I don't want to go to hell. Hell's not a fictitious place. Hell is a real place. Oh, it becomes the place that people live forever and ever and ever and ever. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Hallelujah. As hell is poured into the bottomless pit. Forever. Hallelujah. In hell he lifted up his eyes. In hell the Bible says he cried. There's something about the flames of hell. Hallelujah. That, that people cry. People cry. This service may not touch you, but I want to tell you, hell will have an impact on you. Hell will have an impact on your life. He cried out and said, send Lazarus. And he dipped the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. I want you to notice he didn't ask for a glass of water. He didn't ask for a half a glass of water. He didn't ask for a mouthful of water. He said, if you just take a drip of water from the end of your finger and touch my tongue, I am tormented in this flame. Hallelujah. That seems to be such a little thing to ask for. Just, just a tip of, uh, uh, just a drop of water on, on the tip of my tongue. Could you please do that for me? You know, this Bible that I hold in my head is a favor it is a bible full of, of god working miracles and, and and working wonders hallelujah hallelujah we find in the word of the lord that god is a favor granting god hallelujah he he's excited to to, to hear us pray and to, and to ask for something that that he can grant us hallelujah oh yes the bible is, is full of of stories of, of god granting things to people moses one time said lord show me your glory and the bible says that he hid him in the cliff of the rock and showed him the hinder parts of his glory hallelujah man by the name of joshua hallelujah when the sun was about to go down and great victory was taking place and he realized you know i'm not satisfied yet with what god can do and and he cried out for him to stop the sun and the moon and, and cause everything to be still. Give me a little more time. Hallelujah. To bring victory to the God's camp. And God stuck his big fist in the wheel of time and stopped the universe because of a man that asked for a favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a favor granting God. He's a forgiving God. Hallelujah. God loves to forgive. God loves to find somebody that's got godly sorrow. Hallelujah. And he gets excited about it. And he says, it don't matter how far they've gone and what they've done. Hallelujah. They're serious about this. And it's a God thing in, in their life. It's a godly sorrow. Hallelujah. There's so many people that fill our altars this day and time that they're sorry, but they're not godly sorry. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. They'll come and fall in the altar. I see more people fall in the altars now than any time I ever evangelize. They'll fall in the altars and tears will be streaming down their cheeks. And we'll pray with them and pray with them. Come on. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to continue to do that. But there's a large percentage. And when it's all said and done and they look up, they say, I just lost my husband. And I just don't think I can live without him. Or this happened to my boy. Or I've been sick with this. If you'll get on the main thing, the main thing is Jesus. We need Jesus more than we need anything else. 
Hallelujah. You can live with that cancer and still go to heaven. Hallelujah. You can have all kinds of terrible things happen to you and still be saved because he delights in saving people. I said he delights in saving people. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Hallelujah. He's a favor granting God. He forgives people of their sins. Hallelujah. He brings salvation. Hallelujah. To the most despicable people. Because he made us in his likeness. And sin can mess us up. And sin can scar us up. But I want to tell you. God's just looking for somebody. That will be sorry. Hallelujah. That will be sorry. But I want to tell you. When it comes to hell. Everything changes. He's not a favor granting God in hell. He won't even give you a drop of water on the end of your tongue if you go to hell. If you walk past Calvary and and you make fun of everything that's sacred and and you die without God. Oh, Jesus. There's no favors in hell. There's no prayer requests in hell. Hallelujah. There's nobody to encourage you in hell. Hallelujah, there's no happiness in hell. That's the reason I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven because heaven's a real place. Heaven is a place, hallelujah, where there's no disappointments. Heaven is a place where there's no horrible things happening. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no affliction in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you have mercy on me? Would you send lashes that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue? For I'm tormented in this flame. And Father Abraham said, son, remember. Remember. I want you to remember the, the good things you had. Hallelujah. And what the, the beggar had. Hallelujah. I want you to remember the days of opportunity that you could have been a different man than you was. I want you to remember the nights that you lay in the bed and, and God came and sat out on that bed beside you and you knew it was God and you pushed it off. The haunting memories of a misspent life. Hallelujah. 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 The sound mind that God had given this man became a haunting thing in his life. Hallelujah. You know, when a person goes to hell, they carry their five senses with them. Very plain in the Bible. You you bring your sense of taste with you. We may have somebody here today that you've convinced yourself that I can't get off these drugs. I've got a taste for them. I'm hooked. You better get unhooked. You better fall before Calvary and say, God, you're my only answer. I have no other answer anywhere. Nothing's going to be able to help me. Hallelujah. I've been in all these halfway houses. I've been in all these drug places to to get you off drugs. and, And then I've never been able to get off of them. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, Jesus Christ has got the answer. Hallelujah. You think you can't give up beer? You're going to give it up when you get to hell. There's not going to be any beer joints in hell. I'm telling you, it's just not going to be there. I've just got a taste for immorality. You, you, you'll have that taste when you get to hell. But you'll never be able to get loose. And you'll never be able to satisfy the desires of your heart. You're going to go to hell with all those things that you allowed to live in your life and grow in your life. And all the things that you fed deep down inside. Hallelujah. You're going to have it there. Why can't you live for God tonight? Why can't anybody in this building say, you know, I'm going to put those, those, those problems aside. That bitterness that, that the man preached about, brother, brother Jeff preached about, Dykes. Hallelujah. You, you got to lay it aside. It's not worth holding on to. Because when you get to hell, you're going to, you're going to have that taste. Hallelujah. You're going to have a sense of smell when you get to hell. You're going to smell the burning flesh, the torment. Hallelujah. The sulfur, the brimstone. When you get to hell, you're going to have your sight with you. I'm just afraid you're going to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just like this man did. And you yourself cast out and you'll see what you could have been and what you could have had and the joy and the peace and the contentment. You're going to have your hearing. 
No beautiful music in hell. Screaming and crying. Hallelujah. Wailing. No rest day nor night. Oh my God. Hearing it. Hallelujah. You're feeling. You're going to be on fire. You're going to be burning. You're going to be burning. But the worst thing about all of that. Is the worst thing is you're going to have a sound mind. In fact I believe you're going to have a mind that. Was keener than it ever was when you was on this earth. Because you're going to have to remember everything. You're going to have to remember a different night. At a wonderful conference when a guy got up and started preaching about hell. To a bunch of Pentecostal people. But I'm preaching to myself and I'm preaching to you. I look at my friends here tonight. Oh God we want to go to heaven. We want to be saved. We don't want that offense that got inside of us to destroy us. Oh, how can we be so out of our mind? Hallelujah. When we, 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 we get some kind of attitude or we get a hold of something we don't want to let go of. And I, oh, my God, my God, my God. To think about going to hell over some insignificant thing. Just like the rich young ruler that left and walked out on God. Hallelujah. For one reason and one reason along. Just one problem. He had kept the law all of his life. He, oh yes, he had done it and Jesus didn't refute that. But here's a boy that was so, so ideal and, and would be a, just something special for any pastor it seems like to come and, and say, you know, I've done this and I've done that and I've done this and I've done that. But I got a little something over here I don't want anybody to touch. Oh, Jesus. I stepped at a revival meeting when I was just a single young man in a little church close to my home. In the back, there was a woman that sat and uh, she had a child that would, she would set him in the floor between the two pews, the back pew and the pew in front. And the little fellow didn't have any eyeballs, just, just sunk in places and his body had not completely formed and he, he, he would never learn to say a word. He would never learn to ride a bicycle. He'd never, never, never get old enough and smart enough to go to school. Uh, he was just there and he would run, he would just lean back and forth like this and he would groan, you know, and make all kinds of noise and, and his mother would reach and she'd touch him the back of his neck and run her fingers through his hair and it seemed like that was the only thing the little fella could even uh, relate to uh, she had a way and, and something inside of him he, she didn't know what he didn't know maybe what mother was but but he, he recognized the comfort of the touch of her hand and I, I looked at that and I thought my God my God such a terrible tragedy such an awful tragedy hallelujah but in that revival meeting things happened that I got to thinking about that boy before it was over with. And I said, you know, hallelujah, he's so retarded. He's so uh, lacking in his mental facilities. Hallelujah. But, but, you know, he would be better off. Hallelujah. It, it'd be better for him to, to live and die like he was and, and, and go to heaven. Hallelujah. Then then for some of these young people that they understand and they know and they're the life of the party and, and their experience in life and getting their driver's license and hallelujah got a little car to drive now and and they, you know boyfriend and girlfriend and, and just everything's going great in life. I'm going to just tell you there's somebody under the sound of my voice that it would probably be better if you had not been born with a, with a sound mind. Hallelujah. It might have been a lot better if you had not been able to be in step with everybody else. Hallelujah. I've seen it just go across the auditorium like some kind of uh, disease that was contagious among the young people. And, and the devil gets a hold and begins to multiply. And, you know, and they start backsliding. And we got them out there tonight outside the, the safe walls of this church house that's running, running the streets. And, and within inches of danger. And it's only God Almighty that has kept the destroyer from taking their life. There's nobody here sitting here tonight that's not enough to, to evade God and, and to evade judgment and, and to outsmart the devil. Hallelujah. 
I'm talking to people here tonight with a sound mind. You understand every word that's being said tonight. You understand what we're talking about tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Jesus name. You can make decisions. You can make choices. Hallelujah. You can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people's not going to cry tonight. Some people's not going to pray tonight. Some people's not going to make a little adjustment. Hallelujah. That has caused everything to turn in the wrong direction. You won't make that adjustment back to where it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. My God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We don't need to wait. All of us need to check. Lord God, I want to be what you want me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine going to hell, going to eternity forever and ever and ever? Hallelujah. Remember this pulpit. Hallelujah. Remember the pews. Remember those sitting here tonight. Remember your pastor that reached for you so many times. Remember revival meetings and altar calls and evangelists coming by. Remember special services where conviction just shook you and gripped you. But you gritted your teeth and you closed your eyes. And you said, you know, I'm not quite ready right now. I'm just not quite ready right now. Times that you laughed at the messenger. I think of a time in, in I, I better not call the city. But it was in, in, in Florida. And we were in a revival meeting. And there was... A, there was a couple of teenagers in that service that were just making fun and mocking and jeering and and and, and before I knew it I, I spoke and I, I I warned them that judgment was coming upon them if they didn't pray. Hallelujah. We closed that revival meeting that Sunday night. The next Sunday, the pastor called me. That girl had went out into eternity to meet her God. Would you come back? Would you start that revival all over again? Well, we, we started the revival all over again, but it was without her. Fifteen years old, belligerent. And I knew something was wrong. I asked the pastor about it. I said, how, how is she in the condition that she's in as young as she is? And he said, well, her mama and her daddy makes fun of the church, especially makes fun of the ministry. And so they they planted their seed in a young heart. In Jesus name, they tell me that the brain is like a video recorder. I've heard of people being hypnotized and. And uh, being able to remember things that they couldn't remember. And uh, they say that you remember everything. It's recorded. Can you imagine going to eternity and all the restrictions would fall from your memory. And, and all of a sudden an unending plane of decisions and choices and, and making wrong turns in your life. My God, hallelujah, you're going to remember. We're going to remember this message tonight. If we go to eternity outside of God's protection and hand on us, if we don't find ourselves in heaven but another place, to think that you're without excuse and there's nothing that can be said, hallelujah, because you chose to do what you wanted to do. In Jesus' name. I preached the revival in Anacoca, Louisiana. At the close of that revival meeting, there was a boy and a girl that sat on the back pew. Her dad was there with them, and he would claim to be in the church. The Holy Ghost spoke in that service and said, there's going to be a double funeral in this church if you don't repent. They, they knew about God. They knew about the Holy Ghost. The two young people were backsliders. I took, it wasn't this Bible that's inside this case, but this case. And I walked to the back of that church and I put it on the threshold of the door of the church. And with a microphone in my hand, I told them, I said, I believe if you walk out of this building, you're never going to come back again. We closed that revival that night. I went to Vidalia, Louisiana to start another revival. 
that Sunday, we'd started like on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. That Sunday, I got a phone call. Preacher, do you remember that couple? Yes, I remember that couple. I just wanted to let you know there's been a tragedy. He got drunk. It was on a Sunday. His stepmother and dad or or had to, had invited them to come to their house for dinner. Would you stop and get a gallon of milk? They stopped and got a gallon of milk. He had been drinking all morning. Headed to her mom and dad's house. Lost control of the car. Hit a bridge. Flew up in the air. Turned over on its top. And went down into a deep ravine. Both of them instantly killed. I call, I was called and they said, could you come on Wednesday and be at the funeral? And I said, I would. I drove over to Anacoca, Louisiana. I went in that funeral home. Walked down that aisle and I stood and I saw these two young people. They were in their, I imagine, early 20s. This wife and this husband. I stood and looked at her. Broken, destroyed. I walked over to his coffin and I I looked at him, dead, lifeless. All of a sudden from the back of that funeral parlor, I heard a scream. And I turned and looked and staggering down that aisle was that daddy that last week, while I was trying to drag them out of hell, he was joking and laughing. And life like just... Light-hearted. He came down. He was screaming, My God, don't let this be true. God, don't let this be true. Let this be a nightmare. Let it be a dream. And I stood over there where he, the man was at. And I thought, My God, it didn't have to be true. It didn't have to end like that. He fell over her. I thought he was going to pull her out of the coffin, screaming and crying and praying. And God, don't let this be true. But it was the truth. It happened. It happened. The haunting memories of a misspent life. You know, Pentecostals can misspend their life. We can just get comfortable enough just to. You know, I'm a good person and I pay my tithes, you know, and and I'm doing pretty good. And I know God loves me and he does love you. Hallelujah. But there's a hell full of people. And the mouth of hell is being enlarged. Yes, it is. I'm just going to have to tell you what the Bible says. There's going to be a lot of them going in, a lot more going in the wrong direction than the right direction. I want us to stop everybody we can stop. I want us to reach like we've never reached before. Hallelujah. I do. But I want to tell you, if you're not careful, you'll start thinking everybody that's in church is going to heaven. We're all going to heaven. No, we're not all going to heaven. Oh, God, I wish we would. I I tell you, we could. Hallelujah. 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 God, help us tonight. I want us to stand in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Our sweet little Pentecostal teenagers are fighting things that I never fought when I was a young man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're being embalmed. We're, We're being attacked from all sides. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're not going to be able to play and make it. It's, 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 down, it's, it's down to the finish line right now. Some of us is going to be saved. It's going to take a photo finish. Hallelujah. It don't have to be that way. We need to cross the, the finish line. We need to make up in our mind. I'm not going to stand around wasting the pastor's time on, can I do this? Can I do that? To have the attitude, you know, can I do this and still go to heaven? You need to forget that junk. Hallelujah, you need to say, God, I'm available for whatever, whenever. 
Hallelujah. God, I want to make heaven my home. I, I want to be saved. I don't, I don't want to be lost over some stupid, frivolous thing that don't amount to nothing. Hallelujah. Quit trying to push the buttons. Quit trying to, to, to push the envelope. Quit trying to, you know, everything I can do and still go to heaven. Oh God, shake us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Every lying spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's it. That's it. It's, it's Pentecostal praying that'll get the job done. My God, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Come on, young people. That's it. Oh God, oh God, I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. I want to stay awake. I want to be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, that's it. Just reach out and grab hold of it tonight. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's move toward these altars tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we want to make it, Lord. Oh, we want to make it, Jesus. We're going to make it in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord. We're not going to allow something to keep us. Hallelujah, outside of the wedding. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Iri araba hundi anda yara bohosa ta yara bakaya. Iri araba hundi anda yara bohosa ndai. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Pray, 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 pray. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God. I don't want my children to be lost. I don't want our young people to be lost. Oh, help these young men that's so choice, Lord. Oh, God, so clean looking, Lord. Help them, Lord, to pursue the call of God that's on their life. In Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, only you, God, only you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Pray, pray, pray. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. See if there be any wicked thing within me, oh God. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence, neither take thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Hasatoriyanda Yadabo Hokiyanda Yadabaya. Oh, in Jesus' name. Let's go to heaven together. Let's go to heaven together. Oh, let's go to heaven together. Hallelujah. Let's go to heaven together. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Heaven is a real place. Hallelujah. Heaven is a real place. Hallelujah. Walls of jasper and gates of pearl. Hallelujah. River of life flowing through the center of it. Hallelujah. Heaven is not a place of torment. It's a place of relaxation. Hallelujah. It's a place of joy and peace and contentment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hell is full of inhabitants. That are so full and twisted of iniquity. Oh, but heaven is a place, Lord. 
Hallelujah, that people have been redeemed and set free. I want to go to heaven, God. I want to go to heaven. Hallelujah, hell is a place of disappointments. But there are no disappointments in heaven. There are no disappointments in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There'll be no love in hell because God is love. There'll be no love in hell. Boy, but there's going to be love in heaven. There's going to be love in heaven. And that's the reason I want to go to heaven. Oh, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no rejoicing in hell. But there's rejoicing in heaven. Oh, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's in heaven. God, give us old time religion. Oh, God, Lord, bless us and shake us and do whatever needs to be done, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, don't let us have a hard heart. God, put our heart in your hands, God. Squeeze our heart. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm going to tell you the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Let it flow inside of you. Go ahead, give it to Him tonight. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. I believe you, God. I believe you still love me, Lord. It doesn't matter what I've done. I believe you still love me, Jesus. Oh, Oh, God, we love you, Jesus. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, no favors in hell, but oh, there's favors in heaven. Oh, yes, there is. He'll fulfill every desire of your soul in heaven. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I think we should pray together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.